Hello, my name is Chris Harvey and I'm a senior lecturer in biology at Canterbury Christchurch University in Canterbury, UK. And I'm out here in my front garden in Dover in Kent to show you a strange and wonderful plant um, that is just here over my shoulder. You can see it in the background. So we'll have a look at that plant and discover some really interesting aspects of its biology, its ecology, where it's come from, why it looks the way it does, and that'll tell us a bit about evolutionary um, biology and the, the kind of drivers of evolution. I'm also wearing one little garden glove here to help me with that and you'll see why I need it in a moment when we're over there. Okay, let's go. So here we are. This is the, uh, the plant we're looking at. It's called Echium pininana and I didn't make that up. That's the actual name. It's a Latin name. It belongs to the genus Echium and this particular species of Echium there's, there's many members of that particular genus. This particular species is endemic to the Canary Islands. So that means it naturally only occurs in the, in the Canary Islands. It doesn't occur anywhere else, only on those islands. And the reason we have it here in the UK is because it's been brought over here as a decorative plant. You can see, you, you can imagine why that might be with the beautiful blue flowers, the you know, imposing structure, the, the size of it. So you'll find this in botanical gardens, you might find it in other parks and gardens, and you can even buy this on the internet, for example, or in a well-stocked garden center. You can get your own uh, Echium pininana. So that's the species, and let's look at some of the detailed anatomical features of this particular plant. So Echium pininana, the tree Echium, um, and as you can see here, it's got these really ridged stems with these red dots on them and it's it looks like it's very hairy but those hairs are actually really sharp bristles they're also on the leaves as you can see here you can see the kind of bristly surface of the leaves so that's why I'm wearing my gardening glove here because if I touch this with my bare fingers I would get all these little these little sharp hairs stuck in my finger and it's really painful. So if you see one of these around, be careful when you touch it. We'll talk about those hairs and what they might be good for in a moment. Um, what you'll also see is these beautiful big purple, well not big but there's lots of them, these purple flowers. And those occur in these little, in these little clusters and you can see here there's more developing here. So there's going to be many, many flowers produced over the flowering season, which is May, June, uh, if we're lucky maybe a bit into July. And you can see the flowers go all the way up the plant. So a really big, what we call an inflorescence. Inflorescence meaning the totality of all the flowers, lots of them. And then you can also see here, we've got a little buddy, a little bumblebee coming to visit all the flowers. So this plant is very popular with the bees and bumblebees in our garden and because it has so many flowers they're visually striking so easy to find. You can see another bumblebee doing its thing up there. So um, yeah, very popular with the pollinators and again that's something we'll get to again in a moment. There we go. This is the branch that just broken off the tree echium a couple of days ago. And as you can see, this is proper wood, right? Just like you would find in, you know, a tree, a young tree, for example. So let's talk about why this plant, Echium pininana, is such an interesting one and what it can tell us about evolutionary biology. The first thing to remember is that this uh, particular species is endemic to the Canary Islands. I mentioned that earlier, so it only occurs in the Canary Islands naturally. Um, it doesn't occur in continental Africa or continental Europe. But there are other Echium species that are close cousins to this one that are herbaceous Echiums. That means they don't grow woody and tall like this one. They remain small little herbs like your typical, you know, your meadow flowers and so forth. Um, I'll put up some pictures for them of them here so you can kind of see what they look like. I remember, for example, seeing Echiums like that when I was growing up in southern Germany. And they occur in southern Europe and northern Africa. Now, so the question is, why are there these two different types of Echiums? The woody, tall growing ones that are quite unusual for a herbaceous group like this, and the herbaceous ones that have remained herbaceous. And there were some researchers, some evolutionary biologists, who were interested in this and wanted to investigate this. 
What they did is they took DNA from some of these woody um, echiums and some of the herbaceous echiums. They sequenced that DNA and then they built a family tree. We call it the phylogenetic tree of those uh, species. And by doing that, they can find out the family relationships between them. And what they found was quite surprising and quite interesting. First, they found two large groupings. There was one group of echiums that were all the woody echiums. So there's this species and there's some others like it, and they all grouped together. They were more closely related to each other. And then there was a second grouping, and those were all the herbaceous echiums, the soft, the small uh, echium um, species, and those formed a distinct separate group as well. So even though they're all in the same genus and all closely related to each other, these two different groups emerged in that family tree. And what was even more interesting was all those woody tree-like echiums are all island endemic species, like this one. They only occur in islands. Whereas all the soft and herbaceous ones are species that occur more widespread in continental areas of the world. Now that's really interesting. What could explain this pattern of uh, different types of species occurring in different places in the world? Um, now, these features must have evolved in response to some kind of environmental pressure. So the question is, what environmental pressure was there on these islands that made these particular echiums grow woody and tall, whereas the other ones remained small and herbaceous in the continental areas? Um, and the researchers speculate on a couple of ideas what, what could explain this. The first one they, they put out there was, well, what about the climate? Could it be the climate that explains this? But that explanation doesn't really make sense, because the climate in the um, Canary Islands and in continental Africa or you know, African coast and the Spanish coast, for example, is very similar to each other. So that wouldn't explain why these, these tree-like ones only occur on the islands and not along the coast as well, why this woody growth hasn't evolved along the coast as well. So the second thing they hypothesized is that islands are very unique habitats in the sense that they're usually much more species poor than continental areas. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Islands are isolated, they're surrounded by a big, huge body of water. Animals can't easily cross that body of water, especially small animals like insects. So you usually have a much lower insect diversity on islands than you have in continental areas. Now remember why insects are important for plants, flowering plants in particular, because they pollinate the flowers. So if on islands there are fewer pollinators to pollinate the flowers, that puts a selective pressure on the echiums that arrive on those islands to somehow increase their potential for pollination, right? Because there's fewer pollinators around, so they have to attract them more effectively and make sure they're pollinated more effectively. And a woody growth, a woody stem like this and tall growth might help with that. Why might it help? Well, the first thing is, it allows the plants to grow taller and therefore to produce more flowers. You saw earlier how many flowers this plant is producing, thousands of flowers, whereas a herbaceous echium might only be this tall, might only produce a few dozen flowers. So it allows the plant to produce more flowers, which means there's more there to pollinate for the, the low number of pollinators. But the other thing is, a woody growth like this makes the plant more robust and it allows it to survive for longer over the summer and therefore for the flowers to be out and to be around to be pollinated for longer than a herbaceous plant. So both of these features are tied to the woody growth, the woody stem. So the scientists uh, hypothesized that is probably the reason why these island living echiums are so woody whereas the continental ones have remained herbaceous. Well thank you for watching my little video here on the wonderful uh, echium pininana. I hope you learned something and I hope you also saw how easy it is to discover something even in your own front garden or in even on your balcony or in the park you take your dog for a walk. Something really interesting about the world we live in and how it works uh, and the biology behind it all. So um, use the resources that come with this video to kind of explore for yourself a little bit and uh, find out something exciting and interesting about the world around you. Um, my name is Chris Harvey uh, at Canterbury Christchurch University. Thanks again for watching and have fun learning. Bye-bye.